Treponema pallidum. You may or may not have heard of this before, but if I say syphilis, I'm pretty sure you've heard of that. Treponema pallidum is the causative bacteria behind the king of STDs known as syphilis. So today we're going to talk just a little bit about the microbiology of Treponema pallidum. Stay tuned. Right, so what is Treponema pallidum? Treponema is the genus and it belongs to a family of spirochetes. The genus Treponema is then further divided into two main categories, the pathogenic species and their subspecies and the non-pathogenic species and their subspecies. So we'll discuss each species and their subspecies later, but first let's go for a little quick overview of uh, Treponema pallidum. So Treponema pallidum is a delicate gram-negative uh, obligate bacterium that causes multi-stage chronic infection. So the structural aspects are that it is like every other gram-negative bacterium. It consists of a cell wall made of peptidoglycan, an inner membrane, and an outer membrane. The outer membrane of Treponema pallidum lacks the polysaccharide, thus making it more vulnerable to damage. And it also has flagella, which is present between the inner and outer membrane. So the rotational movement of the flagella along its longitudinal axis is what's responsible for the mobility of this uh, bacterium. So that makes it possible for the pathogen to penetrate and disseminate into the skin. So transmission. Now, if we were to talk, if we were to talk about how it's transmitted, the transmission of Treponema pallidum might be via sexual contact through contaminated blood transfusion, direct contact with a contaminated skin lesion, or even through the transplacental route. So Treponema pallidum actually penetrates the mucosal lining and attaches itself to the host cell. Following the adherence, it then multiplies and it starts to disseminate through the blood and into its certain distinct organs. Due to the presence of the outer agent inside the body, the cell-mediated response comes into action. Uh, and due to an active immune response, uh, the fight between the outer agent and the immune cells commences. This action results in the formation of these lesions. Now, the immune system can destroy millions of pathogens if it wanted to, but some pathogens are persistent and they cause infection if they're not treated in time. So one of the main possible reasons for this particular pathogen to make it past that immune response is the fact that it has an extremely small size of you know, its own outer membrane. So let's talk about the genome, the Trapona pallidum genome, since it is actually the genome that's responsible for the diseases that this bacterium causes in humans. So the genome consists of 1,138,006 base pairs containing 1,041 predicted sort of coding sequences. Now, the virulence factor consists of 12 membrane proteins and several putative hemolysins. After complete sequencing of the genome, it was found that uh, glucose is actually the main uh, carbon and energy source for Trapona pallidum. Now, that's a lot of information to take in, but that's just a little bit about the genome. So the microscopy. Have you ever sort of thought about why do we give so much importance to something that we can't even see with the naked eye? Well, given the fact that we're in the COVID pandemic these days, you probably have thought about that. But uh, the exact detection of this bacteria is essential so that the diagnosis of the infection uh, can be made and um, interrelated forms of the bacteria can then also cause different infections. So it's important to visualize them. These are typical of the uh, numerous other sorts of bacteria that normally are identified using silver impregnation techniques because they stain too weakly to be identified with the gram stain. So silver impregnation techniques is one of the most sort of traditional techniques for viewing the Treponema species. Now we're going to move on to uh, the treatment. Now all of these bacteria are vulnerable to benzyl penicillin, which can be used to treat the early stages of the disease. 
Now, it's particularly important to check the history of the patient before we give them penicillin, because often it's quite, it's not uncommon to be, to have a hypersensitivity reaction to it. So do keep that in mind. So that was just a little bit about treponema pallidum and a little bit of background onto it. Stick around if you want to know more about the pathogenic and non-pathogenic uh, species of treponema pallidum. Hi there. Now, before we jump into the video, I have a very important question for you. Have you subscribed to our channel? If not, then subscribe right now to stay updated with the latest and brand new Scalia.com lectures. And click on the bell icon to stay notified about new releases. So that being said, now that you've subscribed, let's return to the lecture. We are now going to move on and start talking about the pathogenic and the non-pathogenic species. So the human pathogenic species and their subspecies. Let's talk about these. There are four human pathogenic species and subspecies of treponema. So there's treponema pallidum subspecies pallidum. There's treponema pallidum subspecies endemicum. Treponema pallidum subspecies petuni and treponema keratium. Quite a mouthful, but yeah. So now let's discuss uh, one uh, by one all four of the Treponema pallidum human pathogenic species and their respective subspecies. So we're going to begin with uh, Treponema, Treponema pallidum subspecies pallidum, uh, and it is the causative agent for syphilis, as we mentioned earlier, known to be the king of STDs. Uh, so the morphological specifications of Treponema pallidum include a 0.2 micrometer width and a 5 to 15 micrometer in length. It con constitutes of 10 to 20 windings which are responsible for its mobility. The movement is then caused when these windings rotate around their lo uh, longitudinal axis. The in vitro uh, culture has not yet been achieved. Uh, the windings of Treponema pallidum have extremely small width, which makes it nearly impossible to spot it through the grand staining technique. And so to observe them, observe them we have to uh, use the in vivo dark field method. So we're going to move on to Treponema pallidum, the endemicum species. Now, this is the one that's causative for the non-venereal syphilis, which is also known as Bagel. Uh, the disease is actually caused by the respective species and it is characterized by uh, maculus to papulus lesions on the skin or on the mucosal membranes. So it's transmitted via direct contact or through indirect contact such as clothes or glass, etc, etc. So uh, Treponema pallidum subspecies endemicum is endemically limited to certain areas of the Balkans, the eastern Mediterranean Asia and also Africa. Uh, its clinical aspects actually include the incubation period of three weeks to three months. So for the treatment purpose, primarily we do stick with penicillin. Now, Treponema pallidum subspecies petuni. This is the causative agent for what we call yours. Now, the clinical signs and symptoms of a person uh, may that a person may experience after infections with this particular species and subspecies is epidermal proliferation and in fact ulceration. So yours is actually a contagious disease that is localized to, um, to the uh, tropical regions that have a moist and warm uh, climate. So yours is actually a chronic disfiguring and debilitating childhood infectious disease that can affect the skin, the bone, the cartilage, and it's transmitted through direct contact. So its clinical features include the incubation period of three to four weeks in contrast to endemicum, which had an incubation of three weeks to three months. But also in this case, the antibiotic we prescribe is actually penicillin G. So we're sticking to that penicillin sort of route. Now, uh, Treponema keratium, this is another species, uh, subspecies, uh, which is uh, the causative agent for uh, Pinta. Now, Pinta is one of the types of endemics, uh, chronic uh, treponematosis that could go on for years and years. So it's ca characterized by this sort of der dermal uh, depigmentation. 
Uh, if we talk about how uh, treponema carotium uh, is transmitted, well, uh, its transmission is through direct contact. The incubation period is from one to three weeks. And surprise, surprise, the antibiotic of choice in this case is penicillin G. So that was all about the pathogenic species. Now we can move on to the non-pathogenic species. Now the non-pathogenic species of Treponema, the most common uh, non-pathogenic species and subspecies is the Treponema denticola, the Brachyspira alborgi, the Brachyspira pylosiculi, uh, and the Brachyspira hominis. Also quite a mouthful, <laughs> but uh, tre Treponema denticola is associated with periodontal disease in which uh, there's a serious infection of the gums. Uh, it's caused by bacteria that have been allowed to accumulate on your teeth and gums, while Brachyspira uh, alborgiae and uh, Pelosicoli and hominis are actually associated with uh, human intestinal morbidities. So guys, that was just a little bit about the pathogenic and the non-pathogenic species of Treponema pallidum. And uh, while it did include some tricky names, I hope that it helped boost your knowledge on Treponema pallidum. And if you want to learn more about your favorite topics or things that you're struggling in during your medical degree or beyond that, stay tuned to scadia.com.